students we are doing the 14th chapter that is respiration in plants and our today's topic is aerobic respiration and tca cycle dear students we all know what is aerobic respiration aerobic respiration is that which is taking place in the presence of oxygen and aerobic respiration is having four major steps first step is glycolysis second step is oxidative decarboxylation third step is tca cycle and fourth step is electron transport chain dear students in my previous lecture i discussed in detail on the first step of aerobic respiration that is glycolysis and what happened in glycolysis in glycolysis one molecule of glucose which is a six carbon compound it splitted into two molecules of pyruvate which is a three carbon compound now students this reaction that is glycolysis it was taking place in cytoplasm in the absence of oxygen now the pyruvate which is formed from glucose in cytoplasm it will enter into the power house of the cell that is the mitochondria and there this pyruvate it will undergo the second step which is oxidative decarboxylation to form a two carbon compound which is acetyl coenzyme a and this acetyl coenzyme a it will later on enter into the third step which is tca cycle also known as krebs cycle or citric acid cycle and it will be oxidized to carbon dioxide and water but while it is oxidized to carbon dioxide and water a number of reducing powers like nadh2 fadh2 and atp they are formed so students today we will be discussing in detail on aerobic respiration and tca cycle so start it dear students aerobic respiration is having four steps if the respiratory substrate is glucose the first step is glycolysis second step oxidative decarboxylation third step is tca cycle and fourth step is electron transport chain so students today we will be discussing in detail on the second step that is oxidative decarboxylation and the third step tca cycle now students we all have done glycolysis and what was happening in glycolysis in glycolysis one molecule of glucose it formed two molecules of pyruvate now if the respiration it is taking place in the presence of oxygen then this pyruvate it will enter into the mitochondria and within the mitochondria it will undergo the second step in the second step that is oxidative decarboxylation the pyruvate it will form acetyl coenzyme a and then this acetyl coenzyme a it will enter into the third step that is tca cycle or citric acid cycle and will be oxidized to carbon dioxide and water now students tca cycle or citric acid cycle it was discovered by sir hans adolf krebs who was a german born british physician and biochemist and krebs he won nobel prize in physiology or medicine in the year 1953 for his discovery of citric acid cycle now students tca cycle what is the full form of tca cycle tri carboxylic acid cycle it is also known as krebs cycle because it was discovered by sir hans krebs tca cycle it involves the oxidation of acetyl coenzyme a to carbon dioxide and water and tca cycle it is the central metabolic pathway and it is the final common oxidative pathway for all the respiratory substrate whether it is carbohydrate it is protein it is fat etc now students what is the definition of citric acid cycle or tca cycle citric acid cycle cac or 
tricarboxylic acid cycle that is tca cycle essentially involves the oxidation of acetyl coenzyme a to carbon dioxide and water and what is the location of tca cycle the tca cycle it is taking place within the mitochondrial matrix in close proximity to the electron transport chain because electron transport chain that is occurring on the inner membrane of the mito mitochondria so what is the site of tca cycle the site of tca cycle is the mitochondrial matrix students this is the mitochondrial matrix so within this mitochondrial matrix citric acid cycle that is occurring now next so what are the reactions of uh, tca cycle first reaction is oxidative decarboxylation where pyruvate it will undergo oxidation as well as decarboxylation to form acetyl coenzyme a in the presence of enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase complex this enzyme it is a complex enzyme because a number of coenzymes and other molecules they are associated with this particular enzyme and the second step that is the tca cycle the acetyl coenzyme a which is formed then it will enter into the tca cycle that is the tricarboxylic acid cycle so we can say that the second step that is the oxidative decarboxylation it is a connecting link between glycolysis and tca cycle because glycolysis ke baad pyruvate formed hua this pyruvate it undergo oxidative decarboxylation to form acetyl coenzyme a and this acetyl coenzyme a it entered into the tca cycle so the second step that is oxidative decarboxylation it is a connecting link between glycolysis and tca cycle now students the second step which is oxidative decarboxylation this is also known as pyruvate oxidation so here what will uh, occur the pyruvate which is formed from glycolysis it will enter into the mitochondria and there it will undergo oxidation as well as decarboxylation to form what to form acetyl coenzyme a so this is the second step which is oxidative decarbo decarboxylation let us study this step in detail so what is actually happening in the second step that is pyruvate oxidation the pyruvate pyruvate it is a three carbon compound so this three carbon compound pyruvate it will undergo oxidation that is the loss of hydrogen and the hydrogen which is lost that will that will be picked up by nad positive and it will form what it will form nadh plus h positive or nadh2 and it will also undergo decarboxylation it means one carbon it will be lost in the form of carbon dioxide and coenzyme a molecule it will get associated with the two carbon intermediate to form the final product which is acetyl coenzyme a and this reaction that is taking place in the presence of enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase complex because a number of coenzymes they are associated with this particular enzyme like nad positive tpp lipoic acid so a number of coenzymes they are associated with the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase therefore this enzyme is known as pyruvate dehydrogenase complex so what is actually taking place in the second step in second step that is oxidative decarboxylation the pyruvate which is a three carbon compound it will undergo oxidation as well as it will undergo decarboxylation to form a two carbon compound which is acetyl coenzyme a and this acetyl coenzyme a it will now enter into the tca cycle or the krebs cycle so this second step it is acting as a link between glycolysis and tca cycle now students the 
एसिटाइल को एंजाइम ए मॉलिक्यूल विच इज फॉर्म इट इट विल एंटर इन टू दी टी सी ए साइकिल और सिट्रिक एसिड साइकिल और क्रेप साइकिल सो दिस साइकिल इज हैविंग थ्री नेम्स क्रेप साइकिल सिट्रिक एसिड साइकिल और ट्राई कार्बोक्साइलिक एसिड साइकिल नाउ स्टूडेंट्स वट इज द एसेप्टर मॉलिक्यूल हु इज गोइंग टू एसेप्ट दिस एसिटाइल को एंजाइम ए द एसेप्टर और द रिसेप्टर मॉलिक्यूल इज ओ ए एक्जैलो एसिटेट ऑक्जैलो एसिटेट इट इज अ फोर कार्बन कंपाउंड सो दिस फोर कार्बन कंपाउंड इट विल कंबाइन विद द टू कार्बन कंपाउंड दैट इज एसिटाइल को एंजाइम ए सो एसिटाइल को एंजाइम ए इज द एंट्रेंट मॉलिक्यूल सो दिस एंट्रेंट मॉलिक्यूल इट विल कंबाइन विद ऑक्जैलो एसिटेट टू फॉर्म सिट्रेट और सिट्रिक एसिड नो स्टूडेंट्स वाई दिस साइकिल इज नोन एज सिट्रिक एसिड साइकिल बिकॉज द फर्स्ट स्टेबल प्रोडक्ट विच इज फॉर्म्ड दिस इज सिट्रिक एसिड देर फॉर दिस साइकिल इज नोन एज सिट्रिक एसिड साइकिल and this citric acid is having three carboxyl group therefore this cycle is also known as tri carboxylic acid cycle now students this krebs cycle it is having eight major steps so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so it is having uh, eight Uh, cyclic steps and we will do each and every step in detail actually because some of these steps they are having many sub steps also so uh, the coenzyme we will see that the oxalo acetate which is used in citric acid cycle that will be ultimately formed that will be ultimately formed in the end now students the first step is the oxalo acetate which is the receptor molecule that is combining with the acetyl coenzyme a acetyl coenzyme a is the entrant molecule so this entrant molecule it will combine with oxalo acetate to form the first stable product which is citric acid in the presence of enzyme citrate synthetase now uh because the first stable product which is formed that is citric acid therefore this cycle is known as citric acid cycle and look here students this citric acid it is having how many carboxyl group it is having three carboxyl group therefore this cycle it is also known as tri carboxylic acid cycle so this is the first step in first step oxalo acetate it is combining with acetyl coenzyme a to form citric acid now second step in second step the citrate it will lose water in the presence of enzyme aconitase to form cis aconitate and then again cis aconitate it will combine with water in the presence of same enzyme to form isocitrate so elimination of water will take place from citrate to form cis aconitate and this cis aconitate it will again undergo a stereo specific addition of water to form what isocitrate so this is the second step and this is taking place in the presence of enzyme aconitase now isocitrate which is formed in the second step it will undergo first dehydrogenation and then it will undergo decarboxylation so first isocitrate it will lose hydrogen that is it will undergo dehydrogenation and the hydrogen which is lost that will be picked up by nad positive and what it will form it will form nadh2 i have told you that nadh2 they are reducing powers because these reducing powers they will be ultimately forming atp in the last step that is the electron transport chain so isocitrate after undergoing dehydrogenation in the presence of enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase will form oxalosuccinate and this oxalosuccinate it will undergo decarboxylation and after decarboxylation it will form what it will form alpha ketoglutarate now students isocitrate it is a six carbon compound 
and this six carbon compound it is losing its one carbon in the form of carbon dioxide so the final product which is formed that is alpha keto glutarate that is having how many carbons now five carbon so alpha keto glutarate it is a five carbon compound which is formed from isocitrate by dehydrogenation and decarboxylation now next fourth step in fourth step the alpha keto glutarate which is a five carbon compound it will uh, undergo what it will undergo decarboxylation as well as dehydrogenation to form succinyl coenzyme a and this reaction students it is similar to the second uh, step of aerobic respiration which is oxidative decarboxylation because is reaction mein students dono steps ho rahe hain oxidation bhi ho rahi hai decarboxylation bhi ho rahi hai because alpha keto glutarate it is a five carbon compound and succinyl coenzyme a which is formed it is a four carbon compound because one carbon of alpha keto glutarate it is lost in the form of carbon dioxide plus alpha keto glutarate it also undergo dehydrogenation hydrogen is lost and this hydrogen it is picked up by nad positive to form what nadh plus h positive or nadh2 and this reaction it is taking place in the presence of a complex enzyme alpha keto glutarate dehydrogenase complex because this enzyme it is a combination of many coenzymes like tpp fad lipoic acid etc so what is happening in the fourth step in the fourth step alpha keto glutarate it is forming succinyl coenzyme a after undergoing dehydrogenation decarboxylation and after combining with coenzyme a so succinyl coenzyme a that is formed from alpha keto glutarate now students fifth step the succinyl coenzyme a which is formed it will form succinate and students this bond the thiosulfate bond this is a high energy bond so when this bond it will break huge amount of energy will be released and this energy will be used in the formation of gtp which is which is a source of energy so the thiosulfate bond or the thioester bond it will break and during uh, after the break of this bond large amount of energy will be released and this energy will be used in the formation of gtp and this gtp will later on form atp and this reaction it is taking place in the enzyme succinyl coenzyme a synthetase so succinyl coenzyme a it has changed itself into succinate and here we are seeing that uh, atp molecules they are formed so this is also an example of substrate level phosphorylation because here directly atp molecules they are formed by the transfer of electrons from one substrate to another substrate similar uh, to the formation of atp in glycolysis now the second step uh, sorry the sixth step in the sixth step the succinate it will change itself into fumarate again dehydrogenation it will take place but the hydrogen which is lost that will not picked up by nad positive it will be now picked up by fad to form fadh2 and the succinate it will change itself into fumarate so this is the second sixth step and it is taking place in the presence of enzyme succinate dehydrogenase complex now in this seventh step fumarate it will combine with water to form what malate fumarate it is a four carbon compound and malate it is also a four carbon compound and in the last step that is in the eighth step the malate it will again undergo dehydrogenation and 
the hydrogen which is lost that will picked up by nad positive to form nadh2 and malate will again form oxaloacetate which which was the receptor molecules so oxaloacetate was used in the krebs cycle and ultimately in the end this oxaloacetate that is again formed so students these are the uh, total steps of krebs cycle and we have studied each and every step in detail so what was the first in first step we have seen that pyruvate it formed acetyl coenzyme a now students one molecule of glucose it forms two molecules of pyruvate so two molecules of pyruvate it will form two molecules of acetyl coenzyme a and this is one complete turn of tca cycle so for one molecule of glucose how many turns of T tca cycle they are going there are two turns of tca cycle for one molecule of glucose because one molecule of glucose it is forming two molecules of pyruvate so in the uh, for second step that is oxidative decarboxylation pyruvate it form what it formed acetyl coenzyme a and this acetyl coenzyme a it combined with oxaloacetate to form citrate and this citrate it ultimately formed what oxaloacetate after undergoing many reactions now students uh, uh, let us count how many molecules of nadh2 fadh2 and atp they are formed in the uh, tca cycle and in the oxidative decarboxylation now students in the second step which is oxidative decarboxylation two molecules of nadh2 they are formed and no molecule of atp it is formed directly now in case of tca cycle how many molecules of nadh2 they are formed one two three and there are two turns of tca cycle for one molecule of glucose so how many molecules of nadh2 they are formed six molecules of nadh2 they are formed in tca cycle how many molecules of fadh2 they are formed two molecules of fadh2 they are formed and there is two molecules of atp formed directly in the tca cycle so two molecules of atp they are formed after the krebs cycle or the tca cycle so this is the ultimate gain of the tca cycle so in tca cycle uh, we have seen that acetyl coenzyme a it um it has undergone Uh, oxidation into carbon dioxide and water but while undergoing oxidation a number of intermediates or reducing powers they are formed like six molecules of nadh2 they are they have formed two molecules of fadh2 they have formed and two molecules of atp they are formed directly after the krebs cycle नाउ स्टूडेंट्स ओवरऑल अगर हम इक्वेशन देखते हैं क्रेप साइकिल की सो ओवरऑल इक्वेशन में क्या है कि पायरुविक जो एसिड है पायरुवेट जो है दिस हैज बीन ऑक्सीडाइज टू कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एंड टू वाटर विथ फॉर्मेशन ऑफ फोर मॉलिक्यूल्स ऑफ एन ए डी एच टू वन मॉलिक्यूल ऑफ FADH2 and one molecule of ATP. This is for one molecule of pyruvate. But if we um, calculate it for two molecules of pyruvate, so ultimately eight molecules they are of NADH2 they are formed by combining uh, the total NADH2 of the second step that is oxidative decarboxylation and of the TCA cycle. So the net gain of the second. and the third step that is oxidative decarboxylation and krebs cycle is this that eight molecules of nadh2 they are formed two molecules of fadh2 they are formed and two molecules of atp they are formed directly because uh, the pyruvate that is oxidized to carbon dioxide and water in uh two steps first step it was oxidative decarboxylation and second step that is the krebs cycle so in krebs cycle the acetyl coenzyme a 
that is oxidized to carbon dioxide and to water with the formation of six molecules of NADH2, two molecules of FADH2 and two molecules of GTP or ATP. So this is the net gain of the Krebs cycle. Now students Krebs cycle it is known as amphibolic pathway. Now why it is known as amphibolic pathway because it is undergoing catabolic as well as anabolic pathway. It is undergoing catabolism because the pyruvate which is formed after glycolysis it is oxidized to carbon dioxide and water and it is also having anabolic pathway because a number of intermediates they are formed in the Krebs cycle which is used in the synthesis of many biomolecules for example students if we talk about animals in uh, the alpha ketoglutarate which is formed in the Krebs cycle it forms glutamic acid and this glutamic acid it is a neurotransmitter in our brain the succinyl coenzyme A it helps in the formation of tetrapyrroles that is heme group which forms what hemoglobin. So students the uh, Krebs cycle it is not only a catabolic pathway it is also acting as an anabolic pathway for example the citric acid which is the first stable product formed in the uh, TCA cycle it helps in the formation of fatty acids and a number of sterols alpha ketoglutarate it helps in the formation of glutamic acid and this glutamic acid it forms a number of amino acids by the process of transamination it helps in the formation of purines and pyrimidines which helps in the formation of nucleic acids Succinyl coenzyme A, it helps in the formation of porphyrins, cytochromes, chlorophyll pigment. Oxaloacetate, it forms aspartic acid. This aspartic acid, it helps in the formation of other amino acids, purines and pyrimidines. So, we have seen that Krebs cycle, it is having catabolic pathway also and it is also having anabolic pathway also therefore Krebs cycle it is known as a amphibolic pathway because it is undergoing catabolism as well as anabolism so students this was all about the second step of aerobic respiration that is oxidative decarboxylation and the third step that is Krebs cycle I hope student this topic that is clear to you and you have clearly understood it thank you all of you